Welcome back. For many, Bitcoin is something that people have heard about, but they don't quite understand. For others, it's helped make them millionaires. Cryptocurrency prices surged last week during the storming of the Capitol, but today they've plummeted. It is a volatile market that is rapidly growing. And as Rebecca Jarvis explains, some consider it digital gold. Bitcoin hit a record high over the weekend. The hot uh, assets that we have been watching this year, Bitcoin, of course, has been near the top of the list. One unit of that currency is currently worth almost 33,000 U.S. dollars. Bitcoin, it's the digital currency you've probably heard something about at this point. Those stories about early investors striking it rich, hitting gold. Remember those guys from the social network, the Winklevoss twins? This idea is potentially worth millions of dollars. Millions? They put $11 million into Bitcoin back in 2013. Now, they're billionaires. Twitter co-founder and CEO Jack Dorsey has been a Bitcoin advocate from the start. Billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates got one as a birthday present. Somebody gave me some for my birthday. Uh, and then a few years later, I thought, hey, I'm going to sell that. Even rapper Megan The Stallion recently did a Bitcoin giveaway. But what exactly is it? Bitcoin is the world's most popular cryptocurrency. It's a digital currency that you could use like cash, but unlike other currencies, it isn't backed by any government. You don't keep it in a bank or carry it in your pocket. It exists solely online. You can use it to get a hotel room on Expedia, buy furniture on Overstock, but that's not actually how most people are using it. People are buying Bitcoin to store their wealth in. Mike Novogratz is a billionaire former hedge fund manager and philanthropist. So it was born out of a distrust of the system. And it was originally fueled by people that wanted to live off the grids and computer hackers. And what we've seen is that has morphed into this vibrant ecosystem where institutions started coming in more and more. He first discovered Bitcoin seven years ago. Now he's one of the biggest crypto investors in the world through his financial services firm, Galaxy Digital. So what do you do then if you're the average person? We know your long-term thesis is that it's going higher, but in the near term, it could be very volatile. I think, you know, three to four percent of your net worth should be in Bitcoin. Even if you don't have any savings on the sidelines? Well, if you don't know any savings, you don't have any savings, and so then it's, it's certainly more risky. But if you have some savings, uh, even a small amount it will help. When Bitcoin began a little over a decade ago, you could buy one for less than a penny. Today, it's worth more than $30,000. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency. The wild price swings feeding skeptics and the crypto diehards alike. There's a lot of instability in the world. You know, to over 25% of all US dollars in circulation have been printed in the last year. You know, we used to call Bitcoin a bubble, but the dollar and fiat currencies are looking a lot and a lot more like a bubble these days. So you're even more bullish on it today than you were when we first met. Yeah, looking at the adoption of it today. I just don't think there are enough doubters to ever make it valueless. We met Jeremy Gardner back in 2017 in San Francisco. So this is it? This is the crypto castle. Think of it as a dorm room meets think tank. Interesting. Led by Jeremy. Jeremy calls himself a venture capitalist and cryptocurrency evangelist. Are you a millionaire? Yes, many times over. If you are a holder of Bitcoin and it goes to zero, what happens? Well, th then you don't have any. But the reason why I actually don't believe that can happen anymore is that there are so many people in the world that believe so deeply in it. There are always going to be people to buy more Bitcoin. So as, as long as there are sellers, there will always be buyers. In addition to betting on the currency itself, many are also betting on the underlying technology that makes Bitcoin work. Each transaction is recorded in a public digital ledger called the blockchain. Blockchain is essentially the fundamental technology that gave rise to Bitcoin. The industry likes to, to coin the term Web 3.0. It's a more secure way 
in not only the processing, but handling of information that's currently used on the internet. Chris McFarlane is the founder and CEO of Patientory, a healthcare company that relies on the underlying technology of the blockchain to exist. We use the technology to um, basically create a streamlined data access um, for private health information and to unlock that to individuals so they can start to own their health data. So in the same way that the blockchain allows people to own Bitcoin, it also allows people to own their health information. Exactly. I would say three or four years, there's been an increase in the number of ransomware attacks on healthcare, you know, systems, which most people don't realize, you know, that can shut an entire hospital down. So the technology is, you know, a, a new way of, of safeguarding that information and data. It's a far cry from its not so distant dark past. Bitcoin wants the preferred currency to buy drugs and other illicit items on black market site Silk Road, which was eventually shut down by the FBI. Today, with more widespread adoption, the bigger question, is the hype overblown? What do you say to this idea that it is a bubble right now? There's a bubble in everything right now. There's a bubble in Tesla lock. There's a bubble in, uh, you know, Peloton. What's unique about Bitcoin, there are no more Bitcoin. And so as people want to buy them, like they're, they're only the 21 million. It's the only commodity I've ever seen without a supply response. Novogratz arguing that a finite amount of Bitcoin could make it the new digital gold. Right now, we're about 5% of gold or 4% of gold. Uh, why can't Bitcoin be 10% of gold and 20% of gold? For it to become gold, Bitcoin would go to 600,000. That sounded like fantasy two years ago, and now I actually think we'll get there in three or four years. But if the last 48 hours are any guide, be prepared for a roller coaster ride to reach those lofty heights. For ABC News Live, I'm Rebecca Jarvis. To Bitcoin or not to Bitcoin, that's the question. Our thanks to Rebecca. We'll be right back with our image of the day.